Hi, thank you. Um, so today I'll be talking about product management and what makes an effective product manager. Specifically, what is product management? What do product, manage product managers do? And who can be a product manager? So about 20 years ago, when he was still at Netscape, Ben Horowitz wrote an article called The Good Product Manager and the Bad Product Manager. This article was about the sort of nascent evolution of this product management role. Wasn't quite an engineer, wasn't quite a business person, wanted someone who could speak for the consumer when you're building a product. Um, the definition was, the product manager is the person responsible for defining the what, why, and when of the product that the engineering team will build. They are the CEO of their product, which means they lead cross-functional teams from a product's conception through to its launch. Now, while that definition has served very well in the past 20 years, the role has evolved quite a bit. And to say that somebody is a CEO of a product is no longer an accurate definition. CEOs have control of resources. They're responsible for P&Ls. They have a lot of very heavy decisions to make. So I think an accurate update is Product managers manage the resources available to deliver the highest value features to the customer as fast as possible at the lowest cost. And a lot of this means that you live between the user experience, the tech, and the business. So with each of these, you're managing a different set of stakeholders with a different set of needs. Stakeholder management in product management is dealing with each of these separately and becoming the synthesis of all three. So you're dealing with users who want it to be a wonderful experience. They want a product that's easy to use, beautiful, intuitive. Um, you have your engineers who want to build products that are technically awesome, that are just really fun to work on, really cool technology, take things to the next level. Um, and then you have your business or your executive team, and they want their product to make a lot of money most of the time. Um, so to synthesize all three of these viewpoints, the stakeholder um, stakeholder viewpoints, the product manager balances all of these by owning both the high-level vision and the detailed plan for execution. So ultimately, the product manager is the person taking all of the input from all of the stakeholders and synthesizing that to build a beautiful product. They own the high-level vision and then they also own the, detailed, the details of all of the execution. They must see both the forest and the trees. So in that vein, what do product managers do? So product managers, at a very high level, develop the product vision. They break down that vision into the techni technical work needed to build it. They manage the execution of that work through to product delivery. And then they measure the outcomes of that work to inform additional product choices. So when you're looking at what makes a successful product, you want to build a product that's somewhere in the middle of something that's desirable, something that's feasible, and something that's viable. Now, all three of these things are important to the health of a product. And all three of these relate back to the responsibilities of the product manager. When you're developing a product vision, you want to build something that's desirable. You want to build something that you think people will want, want to use that will solve a problem, that will engage someone or help make their life better. And then you have to take that into reality. So you have to break down that vision of what you want to build, and you have to look at what's feasible. And this is both in terms of resources and available technology. And you have to break it down into something that your engineering team can actually build in a reasonable amount of time with a reasonable amount of cost. And this is where the management of your resources comes into play. So as you're breaking down this vision, you want to know what the front end is going to look like, what the back end is going to look like, what your users' needs are going to be, how you're going to have to deliver it to your customers. And then you're going to have to manage that through to execution. And this is where the detail part comes in. So everyone has limited resources, and everyone, <laughs> all of your stakeholders want everything all at once. And so you're really responsible at the end of the day for managing what you can do versus what you want to do. And then once you have that, you have to deliver the product into the hands of whoever wants it, whoever you're trying to give it to. Um, and just putting a product out there in the world is never quite enough because you need to understand, have we done the right thing? Have we built a product that people want to engage with? Is it something they like? Is it something we could do better? And so you really want to measure the outcomes of this product. You want to understand what's doing well, what you could bu build better, and use that to inform the next choices as you grow this product. Um, and that's where viability comes into play, because products must be viable to continue to grow, to adapt, and to fit into the market. So with each of these, there is a set of, I don't want to say skills, but I think there's a set of tools and different areas that you can work on as a product manager. And it looks like a lot, because it is a lot. There's 
user research, user testing, there's design thinking, there's user experience design, and that all goes into what is desirable. But then feasibility, agile project management is a huge thing, but really understanding engineering management and then release management. And I think along the way, as you grow in a product management career, you develop more and more uh, tools and skills to help you do all these things well. And then for viability, there's A-B testing, financial analysis, market sizing, and market opportunity. And going through the process through all of these eventually gets you closer to the middle of that Venn diagram, where that question mark is something that maybe looks like a good product. The reason why I talk about the past, th the past slide is tools um, is because I think the traditional model of product management, which is living in the middle of user experience, technology, and design, doesn't speak to what you need to do the role as much as what you do in the role. And I think there's a new model. When you want to know what skills a product manager needs, what makes a good product manager, you have somebody who lives in the middle of communication, organization, and execution. You need to be able to com communicate about the vision of the product. You need to be able to communicate between your stakeholders to speak to them about what they might get, what they might not get, and why. Um, you need to be organized. You need to own the details. You need to make plans. You need to make release plans. You need to know what comes first, what comes second, and what you're not going to do. And then execution. You can have all the best plans. You can communicate as much as you want and as beautifully as you want, but ultimately, you have to get it done. You're the person in charge of actually getting this product out into the world and understand what it looks like. So product managers, to be a little bit more specific, have a vast variety of things that they do. And you can look at 100 different roles of product managers, and they're all doing 100 different things. Because ultimately, every team is different, every product need is different, and every organization and resources are very, very different. So when you look at this description of product management, product, management, product managers operate in a fundamentally shifting landscape. Technologies change, team dynamics change, society changes, and new business opportunities unexpectedly emerge. It is the special skill set of a product manager to recognize what these changes mean for their product and their own role. Now, I think that sounds a little bit nebulous, right? It makes product management seem a little bit vague, when actually I think it's very specific. You're a person who wants to build a good product, and you want to develop that product, and fundamentally, you use your communication skills, your organizational skills, and your execution skills to get there. Which leads us to, how do you become a product manager? Um, the first question I want to address is that I get a lot of questions about, do you have to have a technical background to be a product manager? Um, ultimately, the answer is no, because when people say, do you have to have a technical background, what they mean is, do you have to be a software engineer to become a product manager? And yes, there are many software engineers who've gone on to become great product managers in their career. They know the code inside and out. But fundamentally, if you look back at the skill set that you need, I think great product managers can really come from everywhere. And when somebody asks me, oh, are you technical? I say, yes. I might not be able to code. I can barely write SQL. But what I can do is I can take a complex technical concept, and I can break it down. And I can communicate it to somebody in the business who might not understand the technology. And then I can take that and communicate what that means for the user at the end of the day. And I think that's very important, because what you need is not a software engineering background, but you need a technical curiosity. You need to be curious about the technology, how it works, how it makes a good product. You need to be willing to learn, willing to understand what's new and what's changing. And then I think you need to be willing to understand the bigger concepts of what the technology is. And I think, ultimately, that's almost more important than being able to code something, when you can understand how all the moving pieces are working together. And all you really need is all of this and a desire to build good products. So with that, where do product managers come from? Um, everywhere. Uh, like I said, you see a lot of designers, business experts moving into product management. You see software engineers. You, know, you can see project managers and interns. There's lots of entry-level jobs in product management these days. But the amazing thing to me about the field of product management is because it's so varied and because your basic skills can come from anywhere. They don't need to be developed in the technology world. You can see people like lawyers, musicians, book editors, athletes, and retail managers all move into product management as a career. And I list these examples because I know all of these people who've come from these backgrounds are now in product. So to me, I think that's wonderful because 
it means that it opens the world of technology, which often feels like a very closed space. And I think it means that you can take skills and pivot your career in a way where if you want to get involved, if you want to change, if you want to be involved in technology, grow good products, that you have the opportunity. You just can't think of it as something that needs a technical background. So, in conclusion, what is product management? You're balancing all of the stakeholder needs by owning the bo both the high-level plan and the detail for execution. What do product managers do? You discover what the users need. You build what you want with your technology. You deliver that to your customers, and then you measure their interaction with that and use it to inform how you build your product going forward. And then, who can be a product manager? Anyone. Anyone who's interested, anyone who wants to build a good product can find a way into product management. Um, so I have some additional resources. That's uh, my intro to product management for you guys. But uh, if there are any questions that I can answer, be happy to. No? Oh, yeah, uh, I think if you can come up to the microphone. Engineering management means? Yes. Um, so engineering management uh, is, I think, a very vague term for um, managing a team of engineers without actually necessarily being their direct development manager. Um, so when you're working with an engineering team, in my experience, there are techniques to managing how they work, um, how you interact with them, what kind of tickets you give them, what tasks you ask them to do that are related to trying to build the best team that you can and really focus on building a team of engineers who have different strengths and using those different strengths to build a good product. But also, in the same way, helping those engineers grow as you, as you work with them. Yeah. Uh, as a project manager, how do you identify the different strengths, the strengths they have and the weaknesses so you can correctly place them? So say if you had a team of five different people with five different uh, pluses and five different weaknesses, mm -hmm. how do you like, get the most efficient and a team, a team and the team that can deliver the most from it? Um, that's a great question. That's one I'm actually always working on trying to figure out. Um, I think that as you work with people, you start to understand, um, you have to first start to understand what those strengths and weaknesses are, and you balance the work you ask them to do. So, you ask people who are strong in something to do what they're strong at, but maybe you also partner them with somebody who has a little bit um, less experience in that area. So what you're doing is you're trying to combine the skills of your engineer and grow them as a team. Um, and that way, you can ask people to take on a task that they might not be strong at, but they want to grow into, and have other people act as advisors and mentors on the same team. Got it. But say one person's weakness is another person's strength, mm -hmm. and like it's like a mutual learning, um, like a learning type. So yeah. if you could pair those two together and like have like a mentor, like a teaching mm -hmm. in one aspect and another person's teaching in another, yep. would that be efficient or like would it be better to like let them do separate stuff? Um, so it's it's a balancing act um, because you are pressed for time and you're trying to make the most of your resources. You are both trying to finish the work as fast as you can, but sometimes you have to take a step back and you have to realize that in the long term, asking them to grow together and to work together on, on building up each other's weaknesses um, actually benefits the team in the long run. So it's a lot of, of thinking about, well, yes, we could get this out tomorrow, but what happens if we do it next week and the next time we have to do it, we have two people who are strong at it. We have a team who knows how to work together better. So it's sort of balancing both that immediate need to deliver something that somebody might be strong at versus wanting to grow them so that the next time your team is more efficient and can, can work faster and better together. Perfect. Thank you very much. Of course. Uh, is it possible to get the presentation for me later? Thanks. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? I do. I do have a question. Yes. Um, and so do you feel that uh, a product manager is a role that could be uh, useful at an event, a short-term event such as a hackathon that might be happening this weekend? And if so, uh, what techniques uh, might be more applicable or, or mm -hmm. uh, very key uh, for such a short-term event? Because a lot of what you're describing mm -hmm. seems to be a product that has a longer arc. Yes. Uh, and most of the type of work that comes out of a hackathon, at least initially, is done over you know, 24 or 48 hour period. So yeah. can you speak to those points? 
Yes, um, and I think it goes back to the, the base of skills that I, I have mentioned. So it's the communication, the organization, and the execution. I think the challenge of such a small, um, a short event as a hackathon is that you are trying to do so much in such a small amount of time that to have somebody who can help corral the ideas, who can help organize what you're going to work on and help execute in terms of like, you know, we only have this amount of time. What, can, what is feasible? What can we get done in this time? Where does that land us? What does that look like as a finished product? And then I think communicating the vision, like being the person who owns why you built that and communicating what it does and what value it provides is really useful as well because you can build something awesome, but it's really not as useful if somebody can't explain why it's awesome and how it will benefit people. Okay. You mentioned the owning the product vision. Can you mm -hmm. describe uh, some techniques you use to come up with the vision? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think owning a product vision t for me is very closely linked to understanding what the goals of the company are. Um, and I think that oftentimes the goals of the company are set by the executive team. They have things they're trying to do, a market they're trying to get into, a revenue stream they're trying to increase. Um, and I think once you do that, you sort of gather all these ideas of what people want and how you could do that um, and put them into a roadmap. And you, you do a lot of analysis against that. So you look at cost, you look at opportunity, how much do we think this could improve, how long will it take us, um, how valuable do we think it is, how fast could we turn it around, and you really weigh all those, and you want to start with the highest impact things first, but then there's also the measurability, so you really want to take your roadmap and make sure as you're delivering features, you're measuring them and you're making sure they're impactful, and you're doing testing in a way that what you can take from that roadmap might shift quite a bit as you find what's valuable and what's not. So my question is about AI development. Mm -hmm. To what extent do you think that uh, as AI evolves, uh, it will replace project managers or it will enhance their role? Um, I think you know. I think there might be opportunity for enhancement. I think that AI development is fascinating, but to me, the thing about a product manager is it's so very human because you're balancing 17 things at once. And so there may be opportunity for um, AI to enhance sort of the analysis and the testing and the, the valuation of what you're building, but um, managing a very human team of engineers is always a difficult thing, and, and managing the expectations with stakeholders, communication around all of that, it's a very sort of like high touch thing, and I think that, that there's some opportunity there in terms of the more measurement and mechanical pieces of it, but at the same time there's a lot of communication and trade-offs that have to be sort of handled differently in every case, different styles of communication that, that will ultimately still need a human to, to manage. Yep. Any other questions? All right. Thank you guys very much. <laughs>